Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Those Two Geeks. My name's Alex, his name is Joe. It is, uh, I don't know what day it is. It is the 14th of October, uh, 30 ish Eastern. We are actually surprisingly both at least 50% awake, awake today. Yeah. So between, between the two of us, you might get, you know, a coherent conversation at some point. Uh, we welcome to the show. We have absolutely no plan today. Uh, before we hit record, we were talking about the giant man has lab and how our initial optimism at it being funded may have uh, been misplaced. But yeah. as we saw with Galactus and it incrementally growing until the last day where it ballooned past or any and all expectations, I still think it's theoretically possible giant man will fund. I it think is. it's more likely that it won't and i think that's more based on the 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 lack of excitement i see in in fan groups online uh, and yeah. and as you said earlier like well we've we've said before the 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 funding goal of of 10,000 backers seems a little optimistic it is. and and, and I, I yeah like i just think that when you go back to the sentinel at 6,000 and i think galactus was 10 hold on Come on. Come on, tree. Don't do this. Come on. Come on. Can you hear me? I reckon you. Um, so if I don't cut that out for context, Joe's actually on the drive somewhere. Uh, so he's mobile. So there, there may be the odd audio issue that I'm too lazy to, to take care of. Um, and I'm assuming you're going through a, a an area with a lack of service. Yeah, no, it's these damn trees. Yeah. They provide oxygen, but they suck with uh, cell towers. So, but, um, or Bluetooth, whatever. I, I don't know what interrupts Bluetooth. I never can figure that out, but it always happens. I always, I don't know if it's, um, like the height of buildings and stuff, but that doesn't always seem to make sense either. Cause I, you know, when I was in, uh, cities with actual giant buildings in as opposed to the seven to eight stories where I live it doesn't seem to have that much of an impact anyway so I don't know if it's buildings and certain angles if so like I don't I don't I honestly don't know like I I'm not going to pretend to be technologically advanced yeah. in regards to bluetooth connection so yeah honestly I don't know because like it's not supposed to affect it you know trees and uh, weather but it always does, guaranteed. Rain and trees always affect this thing, and I, I'm just gonna guess that that's what it is. But it's not supposed to, regardless. Um, so yeah, the Haslab definitely ambitious for you know 10,000, especially when we did the research and found out that the Sentinel was far far less for a much better project. And it's just, I think people are, again, I'll reiterate, people are getting Haslab fatigue. They're just, you know, I think uh, yeah. Go has one coming out at the end of the month as well. Again, I had no, yeah, I had no idea. Um, anyway, so we, I mean, we we could we could go on about the Haslab again for another half an hour, I'm sure. Right. We could also go on about wrestling, which would be more fun. I I, th I think it prob I think it probably would be given that we there's other other than a backer update which is it it's what fifty eight oh fifty eight thirty one it's actually gone up two backers since I opened the page this morning. Oh, that's progress. Yeah, so we I mean again I'm optimistic for those who want it. I will reiterate it is not for me. But that's not a surprise because it's a giant man, figuratively and literally. And um, yeah, like for those of you who want to back it, I, I hope you do, and I hope you're able to get what you need. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you hit the nail on the head, right? You said there's not a lot of positive or exciting chatter going on about it right now. I mean, initially, like every has left, for the most part, unless they're a complete, you know, dud. There's always positive at the very, very beginning. People are excited for at least the first week. But what sustains the excitement is the continued either, you know, the supplemental um, mm -hmm. figures and releases that are going to complement it or, you know, just 
like updates on it and you know the team being excited about it the, neither is happening you know we're getting marvel legends wave but nothing that complements the giant man has left which is so strange and i i don't understand that and i think it's going to bite them in the ass but i wonder at this point are they just like whatever because it's a bold move for them to say yeah, just so you know, we're going to reiterate, we brought nothing new to Comic-Con. Mm. Good show, and everybody's bringing something new to that show. So for them to be like, yeah, which what we've released already is what you're going to see in person, and you know, you'll see prototypes or whatever, but like, that's a bold move. I mean, not even... I'll be shocked if they don't announce something. I feel, like, I feel like you've almost got to, because otherwise you're not... Get, like you might get the people that come out. Oh, that's cool! As you walk by, but you've already seen the images, so maybe you go by and you see it in in person. But I I just feel that when you have uh, like Comic Con like that in New York Comic Con, you want something to show for it. Um, regard you know if it's a a surprise tier on something, if it's a um, yeah, like I, I don't know. Like I just feel like you, you want m- something going yeah. on that isn't um, nothing. No, and it, it, they're just not doing anything. Mm. Like, there's no excitement. I mean, yeah, you got Dwight bringing Giant Man in Times Square, taking a few photos, but like there isn't any like push. There isn't like all the other teams when they get behind or whatever will try to rah rah the backers. And they're just not. They're like, yep. Oh, by the way, we got a cool Spider-Man No Way Home wave. Like, they're just focusing on other shit. Yeah. It's, I don't know. I don't get it. So, but I also think the ghost killed them, too. Like, because the people, again, HasLab and Hasbro, people cross-pollinate. People collect multiple, multiple lines. It's just the way it is with Hasbro. And so when you know that, you should always have like two months between any Hasla just for space, just for breathing room so that people aren't trying to fund two at the same time or one is ending and the other one's just starting. I mean, that's a kick in the wallet big time. And they, they just don't seem to ever get that. They're like, okay, your, your Hasla's done. Okay. Next one out. Like they just want to keep having Hasla. And I think that's hurting everybody. I agree. I agree. Like I'm, you know, as, as someone who um, doesn't really collect, uh, you know, doesn't really collect anything beyond a couple of lines here and there. And thankfully, it's uh, one's Mattel, one is yeah, Hasbro. Um, I'll still pick up the odd figure here and there, but the chances of me seeing like an Indiana Jones Haslab that I care enough about to get when I only have a, an Indiana Jones figure. Uh, right. Like they're, they're not going to do a HasLab for the, the retro um, three and three quarter inch figures that, you know, the ones that are one, two, three, four, five points of articulation, seven points. If you count the uh, twist in the gloves for, for, for them, like I have a few of those and they're, they're going to stay on the wall. They're not coming off. And if a Hasbro flies, oh, it's you know eighty dollars for a giant Sentinel that you can fudge in somewhere else. Yeah, maybe unlikely that I would do that, but you you don't know, or like a a place set where you could put those in. Again, I'm yeah. not opening them, so. But that's the kind of thing that would be more likely to grab me. Right. But it's it's always the um the cost of these things too, right? Like. Yeah. I'm not unique in that I, uh, living in Canada, also add the conversion, the taxes, etc. Mm-hmm. But there's that that is a, I'm sure a significant enough portion of the market that also have to factor in. All right, so I'm how much is it to get it shipped from the states? How much is it? You know, the additional taxes, conversion. Because does when you back a hazard, is ship is shipping included? Okay. Yeah. See, shipping because of the size and the, the price, they always waive that. Yeah. Okay. So that 
does you know it, it plays in your favor if you've got it if you're paying 300 bucks or 200 dollars for giant man you also don't then have to pay to ship it i right. remember looking at the sentinel shipping was almost uh, i think it was closer to 70 to 80 dollars for us right but that's for customs and shit right but yeah but that's just it. i mean customs itself doesn't cost anything it's just the, the additional shipping to get it up yeah. to canada so that you know that alone adds a um I mean, if you're already spending 700 bucks on it, what's another X number of dollars? Um, but I, I recall it being more than between that and the conversion. It was just over the tipping point of where I'd want to be with it. Anyway, but we've we've gone over that enough times. I mean, I think the thing is, like, like let's just take this. Let's not just say Hasbro. Mattel just had their um, their fan vote crowdfunding win for uh, Masters, and they're gonna. They're going to do that next as the mm. next place. And to me, what a dog shit place that like it, the, it's fucking, um, what is it? The snake kingdom, which is basically for, you know, the snake men, but it looks like a green, uh, snake mountain with a little bit of changes, like a gate and stuff. Like, I'm like, what the hell they had the, you know, the vehicles, they had like so many, they had three other things that they could have voted for that were way cooler than this. The Bright Zone, which is obviously classic. Everyone loves that thing with the puppet. So if you could have updated that, that would have been interesting. And then the, um, the you know, the Eternia um, vehicle, which was huge. I think it was called like the AT something or whatever. I forget what it's mm-hmm. called. But I, I voted that. I wanted that because it's so different. And people go with the fucking Snake Kingdom, which is essentially Snake Mountain. And I'm like, why? Like, uh, and that's not going to be cheap because it's crowdfunded. So it won't be 80, uh, 90 bucks like Castle Grayskull and Snake Mountain was. They'll have to justify it with tears and bullshit. So I'm guessing it's going to be about 200 bucks. And I'm like, no, easy pass for me. Yeah. I was just taking a look at. Yeah. That just speaks to crowdfunding of all types. I think people are getting sick of these huge mega corporations using crowdfunding when we mm-hmm. know they can do other avenues. It's been proven. Crowdfunding should be like the little guy that needs the backing and is trying to get a dream off the ground. You know, originally HasLab was dream project. That's what they called it dream project that you could never get anywhere else. I, I don't think Giant Man falls into that, the more I've thought about it. No, I I don't think he does either, honestly. Like, he's a cool figure, mm-hmm. but there's not many people that would say, oh, yeah, this is, this is the one that I absolutely need for my, for my thing. Right. It's just the diehards that are like, yeah. Have everything in their collection pretty much you know the diehards and all the um the youtube review channels like they're all frothing but other than that i'm not hearing like people going nuts for it i've heard a bunch of people as a matter of fact say i have the old toy biz one that one's decent enough for me like yeah that you know I, I think the HasLab is almost pushing up the value of the Toy Biz one more than it's doing anything else. Which is weird. Yeah. Like I, I saw somebody spend 160 on the Toy Biz one online, and I'm like, for 40 bucks more, you can get the most amazing giant man, period. But I, I don't know. I, I don't get the... I, I don't, that's just it like for 40 bucks more you could get it but i wonder if the theory is well yeah for 40 bucks more i might be able to get it because it might fund but this is 160 and i can get it in my hand within a week right exactly and you know that's how we are with with toy collecting unfortunately especially i mean in hasbro i will give them that no team other than hasbro and mcfarlane are so good at getting stuff out asap like pretty Mm -hmm. much the field and it's almost in your hands Whereas, you know, Mezco, Mayfex, um, sometimes Mattel, like, it, it takes a while. You know, Hasbro is pretty good at just getting out product. But I don't know. Like I said, it's just, I think the, the pandemic being over has really, truly affected the toy 
toy boom, you know, because the toy boom is us. It was all us who was home with nothing to do and running off nostalgia. Mm -hmm. And you just took it like a drug. And now that it's waning, you don't have anyone under us coming up and being the next, um, you know, the next version of toy collectors. They're into electronics. They're into other stuff. Like, I always say this all the time. Once we hit, like, 50, um, I feel like the toy biz, uh, market's going to take a massive dive. Yeah. I I mean, I'm, I don't think you're wrong. Honestly, I don't think you're wrong. Like, there's a lot of, there's a lot of things I'm, I'd love to own, but I'm like, yeah, I don't really have a space for it. So even I, with that, like, I'm looking at all of the legends that are coming out. Yeah. And how many of them I'm like, oh, that's cool, but I don't need it. I've got a right. a tote and a half or in the basement of, of toys that I'm, I don't have space for that I don't really want to get rid of, but right. I don't know where to put. And yeah. so I, I started to transition away from like brand new legends to, you know, carded retro figures that you can hang on the wall that you can find, enjoy. Right. Like I have a uh a batman 89 figure that i had as a kid which is probably the entire reason i grabbed it oh really and it's yeah it's it's sitting on on my wall at the moment um it's still got i think it's a canadian tire price tag i'm not entirely sure but it was 4.99 at the time it's still sealed oh, the, the card is like a little bit like malformed from yeah what, you know just life that's fine i'm not worried um so like i i have like it's a, a Kenner figure, you know, that that's going to stay on the card. That will stay there. Yeah. And that's, and then I've got a couple of Hot Wheels, funnily enough, that are still carded that I'll, I'll leave there. Like just things like that, that. I'm like, oh, that's cool. I'll throw that on the wall or like a couple of Motu things. Stuff right. that I can put on the wall and just enjoy and look at that. I'm not as fussed about posing. I'll still pick the odd thing up here and there, but I don't think it's going to be with the intent of anything more of, oh, that's cool, I like him, I'll grab him. Yeah, see, what I always wondered is, you should have just got into collecting the X-Men retro carded legends. It's not a super ton of them, but there's mm. enough to make a great display on the wall, like, and that's your jam. I never understood why you wouldn't just get them on card. Yeah, it's funny, like, I think, because at the time I was opening everything to pose and st stick right. on the shelf. And now all yep. of a sudden, like, yeah, now maybe I, I should have done it this way, but trying to find the ones that you've missed at this point is... Uh, yeah, exactly. So, um, but again, like, I'm with the new ca uh, cartoon retro movie wave that's coming out. Yep, I was going to um, say, do you have any interest in the X-Men 97? Other than Wolverine, no. But that's purely because it's the, um, the Wolverine collection that I've got going on. So, like, right. I'm... Right it's one of those things where I've ordered what I need from that. I'm not as concerned about anything else. Like they're cool. I like them, yeah. but it, again, it's, it goes back to your point of, I'm not, you know, we're, we're starting to transition away from, we have what we want. Yeah. And, and unless it's a, a brand new thing coming out, we're probably not going to be as, uh, as fast with a lot of stuff. So I heard someone say the other day, and it mm -hmm. is pretty true. We're almost at the point of collecting various IPs and, you know, waves that we've got every character that we really kind of want. Like, I've seen so many people, especially on, like, when I do Dan Who, I've seen, like, three people go, I can quit now if I wanted to tomorrow because I really have everybody that I want for mm -hmm. whatever franchise, but everything else is gravy and overkill. Now, me, I always want something. So, like, I make cuts all the time, but I always want something, like, I'm never done. And uh, NECA Turtles is the worst offender of that. Like, every time I say, okay, once they make this character, that's it. I'm good. That's all I ever would need. And then they find new ways to find characters that I didn't know I needed. And I'm like, son of a bitch. Like, how did I not know this? Like, they're the worst. Marvel is cherry-picking for me. NECA, yeah. though, ugh, they fucking get me all the time. Like, originally, 
I was supposed to be done with the Turtle Cartoon Wave two years ago when they started with a, well, a year ago when they released Mona Lisa because she was one of the only figures I never had as a kid for Raphael's girlfriend. I was like, once they make her and an updated April O'Neil, which they made them both at the same time, I'm like, I'm done. And then they found like 10 new characters that I like, nope, need those, have to have those. And it's just crazy. Like, it's just, yeah. not every um, franchise can do it though. Like Star Wars, I think people are super burnt out of the Black Series. Because how many clone trooper variants or stormtrooper variants can you really get, even if they're updated articulation? Like, that seems to be all that comes out, with the exception of the oddball figure from, like, a Disney Plus show. Like, the Ahsoka wave is great. So I, I got... the, the ironic thing is, with uh, we've got in the store right now, there's the, the Ahsoka from The Mandalorian and yep. Ahsoka from The Ahsoka wave. Same thing. It, the only difference is where the lightsabers are in the package. Really? Okay, I didn't even know that. That's the only difference. You know, the actual, the package itself, and I think in one of them, the yeah. lightsabers, both of them are next to her on one side. Yep. And the other one, the pa- the, um, they're on either side of her. That is the only difference. So they, they did a new plastic mold. Right. And that's it. So, I mean, they're the worst offenders of Ryu. Like, we always talk about the way you use and reuse, and we get it because it's a business. But no one does more reuse than Star Wars. Nobody. You're basically buying the same figure, like, four or five times a year in different ways. Crazy. You know? But I, I, I bought Sabine Wren, and I'm very happy with her. Because uh, once I started watching Ahsoka, like, her character took me immediately. And I was like, yeah. yep, got to get her. That's the thing. Like, there's a couple, a couple of uh, Masterverse figures that I, I'm looking for. A couple that I'm, you know, and it's solely based on nostalgia at this point. It's like, oh, I had that one as a kid. I'll, I'll grab an updated version of him. Slushhead, right? I actually found Slushhead, believe it or not. Really? I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Um, and he is absolutely as fantastic as I was hoping he would be. Yeah. Um, and I think I have Buzz Off coming. Because nice. I I like I like Buzz Off as fan like I enjoy I enjoyed that one, um, yep. but beyond that like maybe there's a couple of uh, new adventures Masterverse figures when they're coming out, but I don't right. need anything else like I it's just one of those things where um, unless it's a, unless I'm just really taken with the design I don't feel the need to yep. to pick it up. Yeah, I mean that's me, but for like, so I veered more towards the origin because yeah. I just enjoy those figures more. There's, there's my childhood updated mm-hmm. and still the, the almost the exact same spirit, but just everything I would want. Yeah. And, uh, but I've stopped on or Like, I don't jump out and get origins or I don't jump on every Mattel creation uh, offering now. Like, I missed Lady Slither and that's okay. I got Fangor because he's fucking awesome. But, um, like... I just don't really care. But the thing is, I'm all in to each of the filmation waves. Like, there's no question. Two of those are coming from each uh, release that comes out. Like, you know, they're yeah. going to the wall and then they're coming out of the package. Like, because that is just like the dream to have the filmation because I missed the boat on Super 7 and Maddie Collector when they first started. And, like, I had to chase them down to and Skeletor, which, wow, was they a bitch to get, and they were expensive as hell. And then I got Prince Adam as well. So, like, that was all I could really get. Teela was crazy expensive. Mm. Man in Arms was really expensive. Um, Ordak was nuts. He's, like, now, like, four or five hundred bucks. Jesus. Yeah. Man in Arms is somewhere, like, three, four. Teela is, like, three. So, um, you know, even like Merman's like two or three. The Sorceress was 50 for a while. She was stock price, and then she went up to about two. So it's like, I, I can't. It's just too many to keep up with and go back, backtrack. I might as well start fresh from ground zero. And I love the way that they're doing the filmation with the, um, the origin. And they're not 100% what you saw in the cartoon because of the stockiness, 
but everything of the spirit of the filmation figures there. Mm. And that's true enough for me because I think they'll go deep with that one. And that will make yeah, like I, I did, I was reading that people are saying Origins is mostly coming to a close for them. That's like what that, they said. Right, that they don't need any more Origins line. And and so then once you've got all of that, well, then where do you go? Yeah, they pivoted to Filmation. Because mm. Filmation is Origins. It's just yeah. a new, uh, it's just a new um, iteration. And it was yeah. deep it's smart because, let's face it, like, again, it's my age, your age, to collect. Our mind's eye of He-Man is that goofy filmation cartoon. That's what we think of. That's what we think of with Skeletor. Yeah. You know? Well, that's just it. Like that's that's where you tend to think of. Oh, well, that's what I imagine Skeletor to be. Nothing else. Yeah. Exactly. So, like, I'm all in on those. And what's the good thing about them is Mattel. Fairly all Mattel products. That, that are mass marketed seem to be cost effective. Like they keep up with McFarland price point and like very easy to collect. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's not like unfortunately Hasbro, Mayfair, all the other ones that just go up in price. Like they keep solid at around like origins are always like twenty, twenty two at the most. Yeah. Unless it's a box offering. And that's fine, I can handle that. And for somebody who wants two of each that's a godsend because it's like, all right, well, basically what I'm doing is paying what I would for one normal wave of a larger figure, and I get two each. So I'm, I'm you know? Yeah. Yeah, no, exactly. Like it, it's, you can, you can justify it a bit more for yourself at that point, right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, and, and again, nostalgia is a powerful, powerful thing. The oh, thing oh, that yeah. I, thing that I've been hunting like a madman and I finally just broke down and got one overpriced on eBay for one of the waves is the Batman animated McFarlane redo because I want to build I want condiment King first of all I think he looks phenomenal but they released the Scarecrow that was so hard to find in, in the first um, like DC collectibles wave mm-hmm. because missed him he went up to like four or five hundred bucks and he still up until like a week ago, he was sitting up about that price. Now, you can find Scarecrow and Target. I can't. I've had no luck. People fucking scoop him up left and right every morning, but I finally just overpaid online and said, screw it, and I got the chase. I had to. I'm like, I'm not going to miss the photo on Scarecrow twice. You know? No, and the thing is, that's when you get to that point where there's a chance you'll miss it again, you're like, mm, yeah, no, I'm I'm willing to just bite the bullet on this and, and go for it. Yeah, and there's a lot of juice with that way, that line. Still, yeah. Because people love it. Like, the big smart thing McFarlane did, I didn't get him. He sold out so fucking quick on pre-order. Mm-hmm. Was they re-released Alfred that originally just came with the Batcave playset. They just released him because that's what everyone wants. They want Alfred for their collection. And yeah. Not many people could afford a thousand dollar back case because that's what it is minimum right now. It has been for years. So now people are getting Alfred instead of having to pay two, three hundred bucks for him. But my God, he went so quick. He was like, boom, gone. So I'll be hunting him in the store when he starts. When he inevitably to- comes down. Yeah. yeah the one thing I've found out about Target is they're a bitch at first. They're really, really hard because everybody goes out and scoops them and scalps them immediately. But after the initial, like, frenzy, you start seeing them pop up all the time, Mm -hmm. like, a couple months later. So I just got to play the long game with Alfred if I don't get him online. Yeah, like, if you can't, if you don't get him quickly, it's like you said, you just got to wait at that point and just see, okay, well, let me... Let me see how long do I have to wait till I can finally get a hold of him. It's it's gonna I, happen at some point. Exactly, dude. Like that's the whole thing. Like you know, gone are the days of I have to have it the day it comes out, or I or I or I fail. Because that was the crazy collector mentality I had a couple of years ago. 
Like I needed to have it like before everybody. And now I'm like, ah. what was happening was I was getting it before everyone and it was sitting in a box. Yeah. Well, like you, you just, months. yeah, it would just sit there for a bit. Yeah. So I was like, nah, screw that. I don't have to break my balls to try to, you know, get this thing because I want to be, oh, I want to put it on Instagram. And, you know, everyone else, that's what everyone does. They just get a figure and throw it on Instagram. And it's like, I want a figure because I want a figure. Like, mm-hmm. the stuff that's at my new place right now is stuff that, like, I completely cherish. Like, yeah. Like, all that stuff, you know what I mean? Well, that's something like, you, and you, you said before in your new place, you've got a little bit less room than where you oh where you I, were before so then you you're you're being a bit more selective with what's coming out and you're being a bit more um well, i mean selective choose the same thing but you know you're you're being a bit more well i don't need this so i'm not right. gonna grab it it's gonna stay yeah. in a box for three months until i finally get around, get around to actually opening it exactly. yeah glass cases are in my future for sure because there is a way more limited space yeah. And I, as far as I lost an office, like I gained bigger, like I have big room, but no dedicated room like I have now in my apartment. Yeah. So, you know, I got to be a little bit creative and, um, you know, use some pantry space to sort and stuff. And cause I got a really big pantry, which is nice. And nice. I'm not the guy who like has a ton of food sitting there all the time. Like I don't do that. So, the totes are going to go in there, you know, like, but, um, <laughs> yeah. but I'm well, going to get the last cases to display things. Finally, I want to have things prominent in the living. Yeah. Like, it's the same for, for us, right? Like, we, we live right next to a grocery store. Yeah. So our, like, if you, if you, without knowing that, if we said, Oh, this is our kitchen, like, dude, there's almost no food in here. Like, well, no, because when, when we know what we want, for yeah, supper, you get but yeah, we just, we just go over. So like, if yeah. you looked in our fr- fridge, there's almost no vegetables. And beyond, like, frozen stuff we have, there's almost no fresh veg because it takes me two minutes to walk over to the grocery store. Yeah, so I get why, why would you have stuff in the house? Unless you know what you've got. Like, well, I, I need this for a meal for today and tomorrow, so I'll go grab it now. Yeah. And then, so. I mean, unless the zombie apocalypse happens, you're you're in okay shape. Like, it's yeah. a more... I mean, don't get me wrong. It, it it wasn't convenient when when the hurricane hit and no oh. power out for right. eleven days. Right. That we're like, oh wait, what do we what do we have? But luckily we we do after that we've kept like a store a uh, kind of stockpile yeah. of canned goods, stuff that you right. can open in a in a pinch and cook either on a uh, on a barbecue or yeah eat, eat without cooking. Like my wife thinks I'm insane for liking uh, baked beans just straight from the can, uh-huh. but it's. It's one of those things where I I did it when we were camping as a kid. It wasn't yeah. something I would do all the time. And then I was at work one day and like I am really hungry and I can't get away from my desk. And right. I have a can opener and you know what? This is just gonna happen. And I ate them like that actually wasn't terrible. It wasn't great. And it's not something I do all the time versus cooking them. But in a pinch it is something that I have to know to do. Right. No, I get that. I mean, that makes sense. But, I mean, that's the normal, like, baked bean. Yeah. I mean, always canned food is kind of like shit food, like corn and baked beans, like, ugh, you can't stand that stuff. But, you know, if you're starving and, <laughs> and you're in a, you know, a situation where there's no food supply, yeah, you'll you'll change your tune. You'll be like, all right, I'm going to baked beans. Exactly. Like, it's stuff you keep in the house for... Um... Why are we talking about food? I don't know, and I just realized <laughs> that. But but close on it because now it irks me. Like it's more efficient what you and Mandy do because you're not going to have food go bad. Yeah. Whereas one person and I like usually go and frenzy buy, and then all of a sudden I'm like, oh shit, all these vegetables are bad. All this is bad. Mm. All this, is bad. and I just wasted like half my food, and it's like, yeah. but it's tough to gauge but anyways off the food topic <laughs> so this is just an anecdote and it, it'll get us away from it do you know we now have to keep our bread in the fridge really yeah do not because it goes it? bad it, i mean it actually saying it, keeping it in the fridge it does keep for a lot longer um, yeah, I always enjoy it. but no it's because the 
Walter had decided one day, like, oh, what's this? And every time he sees bread out, he will chew it because he likes the feeling I get, like he just plays with the bread. So we can't leave it out because if we do, he chews the package and then all of a sudden you've got to waste it because it you, you may not notice immediately and then it goes all hard and, and gross. That is funny. He's a menace. He is. He is. But anyway, um, enough about food on a podcast. It's usually about toys and wrestling. And... Yeah, yeah. So the other thing, I will veer away from toys for a few moments, is New York Comic Con. This news came out. This was kind of interesting. Warner Brothers Discovery is doing a line of comic books. Did you see that? I did not. So they're doing Thundercats is one of them, which, okay, I'm all for. I love Thundercats. But, like, yeah, they're doing a dedicated line of, like, I think, like, four or five titles under a Warner Brothers Discovery imprint. Which, interestingly enough, seems to be published by Dynamite. Yeah, I think it's Dynamite, which is kind of strange because you would figure it'd be DC. Yeah. But I, I so don't know. So what? Thundercats, Flintstones, Powerpuff Girls, Space Ghost, yeah. Johnny Quest, and We Bear Bears. Yeah, Space Ghost I'm all in on too. I love Space yeah. Ghost. So, but, uh, I mean, yeah, Thundercats I, is written by Declan Shelby, which is interesting. A good writer. Yeah, exactly. Mm. And I, I'm all for a good written Thundercats series. They yeah. Had, they had some in the, like, I don't know, in the early 2000s, like 2010. They had, like, mini series here and there with some really good artists, but the stories were a lot to be desired. But, like, you had, like, um, J. Scott Campbell, you had Brett mm. Booth, you had McGinnis, you had, you know, like, all these heavy hitters of the art. But then, like, the stories were, like, yeah, you know, never really continued. They always died after, like, five or six to nine issues now i think i just think it's very interesting that warner brothers discovery wants to get into comics and i think it's kind of cool and i'm also intrigued so mm. we'll that goes. but staying on warner brothers discovery see i had i had a plan have you seen the freaking meltdown tony khan has been having on a daily basis I so I haven't and it's not because I don't care it's because I just don't go on whatever the hell you call Twitter these days I, I just haven't gone on it as much um I've heard I've heard about it and it, it it's kind of interesting and I'm like what is what is happening and yet at the same time it, it seems to has it hasn't touched the actual on-screen product as much no it hasn't that's one saving grace but like he is a man child that cannot take criticism that cannot take like anything outside of his vein or his purview and you know okay you're gonna have to have thick skin in the entertainment business because people are gonna judge and criticize your product all day long every single day of the week for every two people that adore you you're probably gonna get three or four that don't and Mm -hmm. you're gonna to deal with that because your your idea is just focus on the people who do like my stuff and cater to them don't worry about the people who weren't going to like your shit anyway but he lets them rent his head like all day every day and he just gets really juvenile and nasty and you're like you're a ceo like i'm wondering when warner brothers discovery is going to actually like step in and be like hey enough you're a ceo and you represent us like this is not a good look you don't know and it's enough. like unless they're, unless they're doing the no bad no press is bad press like it gets people talking but i mean i'm not gonna lie like if you could get interaction with tony khan um through legitimate criticism yeah right like that's actually not a bad thing but if it's a case where he's like again i haven't i haven't read it so i'm kind of speculating but if he's it going off on man. people who uh, have, le- you know, legit criticism in a more childish way, I mean, that's that's something totally different. Oh, it's like if somebody even says like, yeah, no, I'm going to watch NXT. Thanks. He just goes mental and loses mm. his mind. But he does it in like a passive aggressive way that comes off even worse than it was. Like he tries to be like, yeah, cool. It doesn't bother me. But then he like tweets gifts 
like go fuck yourself and shit like that. Like, it's like part of part of me wonders, and this is just um, to play uh, devil's advocate slash giving him the benefit of the doubt, whatever you want to call it. Is it a case yeah. where he's it does bother him, but he's trying to be the bigger person by saying, hey, you know, legitimately, you know, with a lack of sarcasm, legitimately, we'll have fun, enjoy it, and then tries to be jokey with the gift, saying, I don't, you know, the I don't care, whatever. And it's not coming out the way he's intending it to come out. Yeah. Because we've we've all said things uh, in, in various circumstances or via text, tweet, email, whatever, where... We're trying to be, you know, you know what? This thing is annoying me. I am bothered by it, but I'm going to try and be the bigger person and joke o- joke over it. And then all of a sudden you realize that the um, the fact that it bothered me clearly came through. And even though the words were, you know, without context, the words seem OK. You know, you just know damn well that, no, I'm, I'm being petty and I'm this isn't something that I should be saying. So I, I wonder if he's trying to do that or if it's just a case where he he really just is letting it bother him more than it should it's really bothering him you can something yeah. tell like it, and there's some things that he does that are questionable too like he moved dynamite title tuesday on his birthday and like made it about his birthday and like you knew damn well the wwe wasn't going to be able to resist yeah, that was also to do with Warner Brothers moving um, Dynamite to Tuesday because of um, MLB yeah. or some shit. Yeah, no, it was by, because of sports, but he also wanted it on his birthday. Mm. And again, this is him with him thinking he's more than what he is. Like, yeah, he's a billionaire and he's an amazing human being. He seems like a great, nice guy. Like, a yeah. genuine lover of the sport and and the, and you know the genre he, he loves wrestling no one can take that away from him he adores mm-hmm. wrestling and i love that and but i like, also love the fact he's not a character on the screen not like, yet that's not my yet, worry too. Ev- ev- every time he seems to be references oh wait i i got tony khan to sanction this match or i got tony to sanction this match and then there's the the odd time where he appears in like a, a backstage visionette and like uh, with uh, being the elite, and he comes out and he can barely stop himself from laughing as he's in, you know enjoying yeah. being in yeah. it so much. Um, I don't take Tony Khan seriously as a character, and I don't think anyone is is meant to. I would never be able to take him serious as a character. No, and I I think like that's the oh. both the strength and um, so you know like may, maybe a. a uh, less positive right. thing from uh, WWE when you had Vince McMahon be uh, a character in the uh, in the sh- in in the show versus Austin. I realized that it was one of those we didn't really have a choice after the Montreal screw job. Um, right, but it it almost in some ways for me it, it's one of those things like, do I really just not like Vince McMahon? Like at, at what point is this? Is is he the character versus is he you know at what point is he Mr. McMahon versus Vince DeHuman? Yeah. I think we lost that a long time ago. I like it's weird. I think you look at Vince McMahon when he was an announcer and all that, and you know he never gave you the impression that he was this like ridiculously. Uh, egomaniacal human being who does horrible things from time to time. Like you never got that impression. No, I think part of part, like, I think with Vince McMahon's an interesting story. I think it's art imitating life in a lot of ways. I think he pivoted after the Montreal screw job, which was a genius move on his part because he created the biggest boom in the wrestling industry by having Austin versus McMahon. That mm-hmm. was all. But uh, he he lent into the controversy, which I think was a fantastic thing to do. Agreed. Um, and then I think what happened was over the years, I think he just liked being that character, and I think it led into his real life. And I think he just yeah. it's either it led into his real life or he was always that way, and that was his outlet. And I don't think he was always that way. He really didn't give me that impression. Like any time I saw him in anything, Mm-mm. like once. 
did it, it was kind of like somebody who just enjoyed a role and just, I don't know, couldn't let it go and then lived it. Like Ric Flair. Ric Flair lives his gimmick. He's lived it since he was in the 70s. Like he, day in, day out is Ric Flair. Like he'll die as Ric Flair. You know what I mean? Richard Flair, really not even a person. It's only Ric Flair. And because he's led so heavy into that gimmick that it's his real life. And not everyone does that, you know, which Vince McMahon is genius. Tony Khan, let's say he decides to do that. It won't work. It's not his, um, how do I say it? It's not, it's not his default setting, so it won't be authentic. Like, he has a hard time with not being loved. Yeah. And he does at the worst times. Like, when he came out after he publicly fired CM Punk two hours before the Chicago show opened in on collision. What reaction did he think he was going to get? Like, honestly, what reaction did you, Tony Khan, think you were going to get? The Pope would have got the same reaction. Like anyone would have because of that market. Like he just has a trouble at times being like, what? Everyone doesn't love me. And it like kills him. Mm -hmm. Whereas, Vince and Triple H and people of that ilk are able to be like, okay, they don't like me. Well, this is business. I can pivot from them liking me to doing what's good for for the bottom line. Tony Khan has an endless pocket, but he, that's his thing, I think. He doesn't truly care about the bottom line. He cares about being the best, and it just isn't going to happen the way he does it. He tries to out WWE WWE and it doesn't work. Like I finally got to watch SmackDown live for the first time in months last night at my new place. Cause cable and everything's included. Oh, nice. I realized how amazing and how well produced the WWE product is. It's just like, cause I've been watching a lot of dynamite and a lot of AEW and catching like clips of WWE, unless it's a PLE. Yeah. Watching them produce, their in pro product, like in the ring, like just even segments, is far superior than anything Dynamite and Collision put on. It just is. They're, they're good at cultivating moments. Like you had the stare down with uh, Cody Rhodes and Roman Reigns last night because Roman returned and they crossed paths and you could feel the tension and you're like, oh, I want to see that. AEW is good at giving you matches you want to see. Like, oh, I can't wait to see these guys hook up. But they're not good at selling you on, like, I have to see these two in a blood feud. Like, I have to because it's just so, like, enamoring. They don't do that. Like, you get dream matches, but you don't get a lot of substance with it. Mm -hmm. And if you do, it's far in between, like, MJF. And, like, you know, so that's where they struggle. They need to fix on that. Uh, yeah, it, it feels like there's um, the the long term storytelling has improved significantly since I've been watching um, AEW, and I yes. I think a lot of that is maybe because uh, people are listening to, or you know Tony's listening to wrestlers with more experience in that aspect. Like I know Brian yeah. Danielson is more involved. I know Adam yep. Copeland wants to be more involved. Uh, I, I, yeah, Jericho, exactly. I thought it was really interesting to have Adam Copeland barely scrape by in his win against Luchasaurus. Did you see yeah, that? I, like, did. I I thought it was, I, I actually think it's a good choice. Let me clarify that. I agree. I, I thought um, that it, it puts Luchasaurus over as a monster heel. He, yeah. um, he effectively shrugged off a, a title belt to the head which could slightly throw in some tension between him and Christian. Right. And um, then you get the Adam Copeland quick roll up, which I yeah. thought was an interesting choice. You know, he's, uh, he's coming back. We all expected him to be, have a dominant win. And he, he didn't, he struggled against Luchasaurus, which I thought was good. Right. It, it, it elevated Luchasaurus as much as it did introduce people to Adam Copeland. Um, I thought that the BCC getting involved at the end was a an interesting choice because it, it ties in a lot of the stories that they've had going on. It, they don't have to be involved because um, they like Copeland. They can be involved because they just don't like Christian Cage. Right. I, in that sense. 
Yeah, like I love. I also enjoy how the BCC have gone from they went heel when they were feuding with the elite, and now after the elite thing, and they kind of shook hands and moved on. They've yeah. transitioned back to being more of the their faces again, and they haven't done anything differently, really. No. They've just it's who it's all in who they're feuding with, and I think it's a really interesting choice to use them like that as as litmus tests for so many things. Yeah, it's just like MJF, and I only have about five more minutes, but it, oh, it's yeah. just like MJF because it depends on who he's feuding with. Like, you know, um, as far as Adam Copeland goes, uh, I love Adam Copeland, always mm-hmm. will. Um, w- it wasn't a great match. I don't know. I, it just didn't do it for me. I, it, like, I, I liked the end result of, you know, putting Luchasaurus over as a monster in the process, but I just thought it was very very clunky whoever set out that match it was really like dodgy i was like yeah eh, this is not edges this is not adam copeland's like quality of match that he's easily capable of putting on it was very weird it was strange but i'm like all right you know it's a one-off and it's fine the, the meat and potatoes is let's get him to christian that's mm-hmm. what everyone wants to see but does christian have the belt by the time Adam Copeland gets there. Because my theory is they didn't bring Adam Copeland in to win the TNT title. I feel like it's beneath him. And I hate to say that, but I do. I feel like it's beneath him. So I feel like he can't feud with Christian and ignore the belt because that would be shitting all over the belt. So I think Christian has to lose the belt. And then my theory is basically this. Adam Copeland keeps begging him for a match. And Christian's like, no, I'm been, you're beneath me. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it until he gets cost the bell. Mm. And then he's like, hey, asshole, now you got my attention. Let's go. Okay, And that will make sense, because the, they don't need a belt for that feud. And it would No, I don't. Like, I, I wonder if you're going to see Brian Danielson, maybe not this time, but Brian Danielson go on a run with the TNT Championship, because he said he doesn't want the world, and I don't think it makes sense for him to take it off MJF. Right. And he, right, but he I expect he'll get some kind of championship run in AEW before he's done. And he they could just tie it into it that uh, Brian Danielson is running with a TNT championship and when he loses it, he's retiring. Yeah, that could be the that could be the gimmick they go with and that would work. But yeah, I think he would elevate the title. I mm-hmm. think um like I think Christian is a good uh, representative of the champion he Mm -hmm. looks good with the belt on him it fits his character do i think he's having bang out marquee matches that brian danielson would have with that belt no no way brian danielson will make that belt a truly must-see belt like yeah it'll take every match like you need to watch this because everyone oh and and that's that's just it like when when you've got um but when you've got people of this caliber that can potentially have the belt and then you have Orange Cassidy with the international title again. That was smart. Like, yeah, that well, given I, I like how they clearly played up how injured Ray Phoenix was. Mm-hmm. Um, John Moxie obviously not clear to come back, which I, I think you know, give the dude a break, let him recover and recoup and heal up properly. Put him on the shelf for a while, yeah. Like, he, he doesn't need to be treated like a um. Uh, like WWE were trying to do with Edge, he doesn't need to be treated like he only comes out once every so often. But he he defended the world title so many times against anyone and everyone. He's willing to do like he he is the guy that oh crap we 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 need we need someone you know break glass in case of emergency. There, there's yeah. John Moxley like there, there's no emergency. Let him recover. Let him then come back and put some bangers on again. Yeah, he's your utility player. Like mm. you know help and you need to plug someone in boom there's there's john moxley he's yeah. old reliable you know exactly um, and right now i think orange cassidy is in that role where he can because of his yeah. gimmick is like yeah whatever i don't i don't care like he'll you can fit him in a feud with anyone and everyone and i think that it makes sense right now for him to have the belt he, he'll elevate that one again yeah like i you know i i, I enjoy short title runs because I, I think that's a good way to build the legacy a bit. And then it also elevates the next champion who goes on a long run where they can they go against anyone and everyone. Yeah. And I, I want to see an OC John Moxie rematch when when uh, when Moxie's back and healthy. 
Yeah, absolutely. But so now to like flip it and then I and I'll end on this. Yeah. Is like with JF, he's the world champ. He's got a stranglehold on the mm-hmm. world title. Like Roman does with the the universal title. And um but I don't like the way it's being presented the last couple of weeks. Like I like Jay White and I like Jay White in the feud. I think it's great. But I do not like um I really do not like him stealing the belt and having it a couple of weeks. I think it makes MJF look fucking weak. Like, mm. he should have got back the next night. Like, whatever the next show was, came out with rage and got it back. Like, it makes him look neutered. And I'm like, ooh, what is the direction for this? It, it, I mean, it's an interesting position for him to be in because it, it's almost firmly cementing him as the baby face. But he's not dumb enough to go out and try and take on all four again. Like, he's learned that lesson. Yeah, right. And... And I'm curious to see if the what the acclaim, part the acclaimed are going to play in that because like we you know Max Castro and Matt and MJF are real life friends. Yep. So I'm curious to see how that's going to play out in in the whole feud, like where that's going to take them. It, are we going to see MJF develop a friendship with so, someone in the acclaim, like? Are we going to finally start to see more interconnected storylines in AEW where, hey, it's well known that MJF and Max Caster are, uh, are buddies, or at least Caster thinks MJF is a buddy, and so he'll come out and help him as and when. But it doesn't need to be a, it doesn't need to have a payoff. It's just this is a subset, a subset that might pay off down the road, way down the road, so that if um, one member of the acclaimed is injured. MJF will reluctantly repay a favor sort of thing where he's in a trios match with them. I don't know, but like I like the fact that you're starting to see more long-term storytelling like Roderick Strong and um oh and God, the Kingdom. Fuck. Sorry, get him off my TV. I cannot fucking stand him and now he's got three F- DL at. Like get him like, off TV. I'm not going to lie, he annoys me right now and I enjoy the fact that I'm annoyed by him because he's the, uh, like, MJF is the heel you want to cheer for. Roderick Strong is the guy, like, I know he's talented in the ring. I, yeah, do, not, I do not like this story angle. Like, he's very needy and whiny. Yeah, and cool. I cannot wait to see him, like, MJF and him finally go at it. I think that's going to be so interesting. It's always been the weakest of the Undisputed Era is, as far mm. as I'm always been the weakest of that crew which to, to see him in this role is like even worse but like no so mjf looks weak right now with with him running around with the bang bang belt which i thought was funny for the first week but it just looks yeah. weak right now but then i will say this again Tony Khan does some questionable things like the quarters with max's name on it was fucking really bad timing with what's going on in the world and all the anti-Semitism and like just really, really bad, low blow, cheap heat by, um, what's his name? Juice, Juice Robinson. Robinson. Oh, I, no, the he's fact... been using the quarter gimmick for a while, but that one he should have just fucking stayed away from. It was yeah, really bad. It, given that MJF has addressed, you know, even in kayfabe, uh, he's, he's talked about that before. Uh, how they would throw quarters at him. Exactly. So I get where the, what, in theory, they were trying to do, but that mm-hmm. was not... Like, I don't really? know how much of MJF's reaction was genuine, or how much was... Oh, yeah. Lot. So I'm looking forward it's to... Uh, decision when he was asked about it. Yeah, like, I... I don't know. Like, I'm, I'm, I want to see the payoff to that. I, I appreciated the fact that the announcers were really kind of like shocked and said, yeah, that, that was maybe a bit too far. It just, it was bad, 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 bad. Right. Even like after, when, after when, that. yeah, oh, like Taz and Excalibur, I think handled that really well. If either, if they didn't know it was coming or they did, yeah. and they said, look, this is how you're going to react to that. Like they, yeah, they, they absolutely knew something like that had to get that. It's like, that's yeah. Not- Right yeah on. so like they 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 knew they, they reacted spot on to that i think like you know it's funny though because like again sometimes you think oh there's always going to be the hammer coming down and, and again this is the last point because i definitely have to go yeah. um cody and jay's press conference is still one of the best things i've seen this year oh, and yeah. 
Oh my God. It's just, I don't know what planet Jey Uso was on, but it was great. And I think the only reason Triple H didn't like find them or flip out was because it was entertaining and not malicious. If they were drunk and like insulting people, they would have got fined and all kinds of shit. But I think because it was just entertaining and like, what was that? It was like swept under the radar because normally you can't be drunk at a press. No. And he was like, that was awesome. He's like, I don't know what to say to that. You know? Yeah. Like the, 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 like Cody Rhodes, uh, snickering uh, killed me. Yeah. And what, uh, there was, what, what did he say? Where Jay was saying, yeah, you feel me? You feel sir. me? And then Chris like, hey, do you go. feel him, sir? But, sir? but sir, do you feel him? But do you feel him? <laughs> that was great. And then every time Jay talked, he was like, <laughs> like choking, like, oh, just classic stuff. Because Cody is so good at being professional. And he yeah. was half good at it. But it just kept cracking. He was just like, he's my dog. And then you're like, they hear Cody Rhodes say my dog. It's so weird. Because he's like whiter than white bread, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But yeah, unfortunately, that's all I got. I did enjoy this. Um, we'll record next week, I guess. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll um, we'll sort that out. It's, you know, same same bat time, same bat channel, and all of that. Um, oh Jesus! So yeah, I I almost had a cat walk over the laptop, which probably would have hung everything up, and that would have been an abrupt end. Um, he's, okay. I think he's bored because. He, yeah. he needs something. Anyway, um, folks, you know where to find us. We clearly at times forgot we were on a show. Yep. Um, yeah, that's that's it. I don't think I don't think there's any ending at this point that we won't just ramble over. So yeah, there we go. Hey, thanks for watching the previous video from Graphic Policy Television. Just by watching, you help support our site. Thank you so much. Now, if you're watching these videos, you probably care about geeky things like movies, television, comic books, toys, games, video games, you name it. You can go and subscribe right now to our YouTube channel to stay in touch and catch all the new videos, or check out our website at graphicpolicy.com. There's a nice link on this end of the video. But as always, thank you for watching. Keep on rocking and keep it geeky.